Good day, friends. Oh my gosh, it is like 10, 15 or something on December 9th. I am traveling in my vehicle with a mini fridge and some other fun and interesting gauges that I ordered online. And I'm on my way back to the farm of Heidi Eager. And I'm almost there. We're gonna be taking another look at her sheep and saying hello. And then we're gonna be hooking up this mini fridge with a temperature override and a humidity gauge so that we can cure our Christmas meal of Pinnishut. So stay tuned. Passing over the beautiful Riceford Creek is always a highlight of my trip to Heidi's farm. Here we are back at Heidi's farm. There's the sign that you love, that I love. What is it say again? Campo Bonito. That's really not her thing. That's the, um, the landowner's thing for their house where she lives. It's a guest cottage. And, oh my gosh, there they are. fridge. So I'm going to unload that and bring it wherever Heidi tells me to. Hey Heidi! Oh. Merry Christmas! Ooh, tools. <laughs> tools! Got a humidity meter and a temperature meter. That's right. Both from Inkbird, a company that uh, you did your research. It seems like it's going to be pretty good, huh? Yeah, that's the one that all of the blogs were recommending. So okay, see how it goes. All right, let's get this fridge hauled wherever you want it. So we're trying to figure out how to use this. This is the temperature controller. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to plug the mini fridge into um, this temperature controller and then it will sort of hack the mini fridge to keep it at 51 degrees instead of what the mini fridge wants to do, which is like 32 to 36 or something. Perfect. Um, so it's telling us that it's 60 degrees in my house right now, which is probably accurate. <laughs> and then I've got it set to 51 degrees for the interior of the fridge. And then I'm going to hold this button to get to a different menu. So this, I believe, is what, um, if it's three degrees above, then it'll start cooling again. And 51 is the lower range of what we want the temperature to be, so I feel like that's fine. Great. And uh, as a reminder that from this part forward, we're just winging it. I've read some things, and oh, I don't know what that one is. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going for it. It's always fun to play with new toys, right? Yeah, we're just, okay, yeah. well. We'll figure now, it out. We're gonna plug the fridge in and see what happens. Okay, so there's two options on here. There's heating and cooling. I'm gonna assume we're gonna plug this into heating since we want it to be above what the fridge normally wants to do. All right, so that one should be good to go. And then this is the relative humidity monitor. Um, and it's a similar thing where we can plug a humidifier into it and it will automatically control the humidifier. Um, we're going to try just using a saturated salt solution. Um, I found a chart on one of the um, dry curing blogs that says it has a whole list of different salts and then tells you at what temperature and what, re uh, like at a given temperature, what the relative humidity will be. Okay. Um, and sodium chloride, which is just basic table salt, um, is supposed to be 75, 76% relative humidity at the temperature we're using. So we're going to try that, but we bought this so that it can monitor t uh, humidity for us. And if the saturated salt solution isn't working, uh, we can get a little tiny humidifier and put it in and plug it in. So 
I need to set this. I'll set the. I'll see if it. I'm assuming it sets the same way as the temperature. Yeah, same product controller uh, company. So. Oh, it's very. It really adjustable. It goes by the tenth of a percent. This is gonna take a while. Come on. <laughs> so we're aiming between seven. I believe it was seventy-five and eighty-five percent relative humidity. Okay. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter if I set it because it's not controlling anything. We mm. just need it to monitor. But I'm almost there, so we'll just go for it. We'll see what it does when it doesn't actually have anything plugged into it. It might be very angry about that, but I'm hoping not. We either had the option between just buying a relative humidity monitor um, or buying something that would help us fix our humidity if we don't have it right. So I went with this and I'm hoping we can just use it as a monitor first. Right, and ultimately we're just gonna be tucking these into the fridge and then sealing the door around it in a place that seems the best. I'll go over there right now. Yeah. So the things that will be in the fridge will be the, the humidity probe, the temperature probe, which is this one. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So right. here's our salt water solution. Yep. Okay. And I used a canning pickling salt, um, which I'm hoping is good because it doesn't have any sort of like agents. It's just salt. There's no iodine or no like anti-caking agents in canning salt. Mm. So that'll be good, hopefully. Yep. And then we're just going to put the lamb, I think, right on the rack. All right. And then we'll see how it goes. All right, good. Yeah, remember how I mentioned that the fridge looks a little dirty so Heidi in her goodwill is taking care of this and channeling her mother's mm -hmm. cleaning vibes right now. <laughs> My mother would be so proud. <laughs> yeah. And we are using uh, you know just some soapy water but also then white distilled vinegar and we've done that with our rack and we're having it air dry now after a vinegar solution cleaning. So now we're going to have a beautiful surface inside of our fridge that is food certified safe by our standards, at least. Yeah. And thank you so much for helping me prep this fridge even yeah. better. So Heidi, what does your partner think about this process and having this now in your home during the holiday season? <laughs> well, I don't think I've explained very well to what, uh, to him what I'm doing, but he's great and very amenable and very willing to just go with the flow. All right, plus you probably promised him at least a bite of this dish at the end, right? Yes, and I think, I don't know that we've talked about this explicitly, but if this goes well, then we can cure other meat, which I think uh, he would very much enjoy eating, so. Well, good, so it's a win-win. Yes. Perfect. Okay, okay, everybody's so excited because the last time we left your house, we were doing this, and now we're doing the opposite, taking it out. Uh -huh. da, 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 da. All right, have you noticed any changes? Not really, which I was really surprised about. I feel like the ends are getting a little bit of the like dry cured, um, usually like if you see a, a cut of dry cured meat, it's a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. But I think mm -hmm. that's really the only thing that I've noticed. I feel like maybe this is darker as well. Have you had to drain off any liquid? No, it really has not gotten very juicy, which is mm -hmm. surprising. Okay, there um, is moisture though. I there mean, is, quite a yeah. bit, but I wonder, are we supposed to towel that off or anything, do you think? I don't think so. Okay, yep. We should double check, but I don't think so. Yeah, all right, well, good, thank you. I also was trying to look today about which direction it's supposed to go. Oh, um, sure, ribs I, up or down. I think we put it this way, mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna double check that as well today. All right. All right got a towel in case it drips on anything, it shouldn't. Um, so we've got our salt solution in there. The other thing that I'm gonna add this afternoon is a little tiny desk fan. Um, because the things that are important are temperature, humidity, and airflow. I'm bonk that into my humidity sensor. Let's move that. <laughs> All right, you can hear the fridge is going. It's purring a little bit. Separate them so they don't touch. Okay. And then we'll just check in on it and make sure that this salt bath is creating the right amount of humidity, and we'll go from there. Great, all right, the great adventure continues. <laughs> Finish up day two, 
temperature and humidity gauges working and let's just see what happens. How long ultimately will this process take? So the directions say four to six weeks and the way that you know it's done is by checking the weight. Um, it should have dried and lost 32% of its original weight. Um, and we'll see. And I think we're maybe not going to get quite fully dried before we get to Christmas, but because we're not actually trying to preserve it, we're just trying to get the, the unique texture and flavor, um, it will be okay if it doesn't go the full amount. All right. Well, I'm so thankful and grateful again for your time. And thank you for hosting our Pinnaschutz dinner in the mini fridge at your home. And let us know if there are any exciting changes that happen. Sounds good. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. What Heidi didn't know when I got here is that I got treats from the Newberg Bakery that we talked about in video one. And were you surprised? So surprised and thrilled. <laughs> I'm so excited. Happy day to you. Thank and you. here you go off to work with a little extra Next love. time. <laughs> All right. Bye, Heidi. Bye. I'm listening to a Norwegian boys choir CD in my car, or my truck, as we leave Heidi's place today. But I'm also going to just give you a little look at the sheep here at Radical Heart Farms before we depart. So let's crank up this beautiful organ and play music for the sheep. A pastoral scene from southeastern Minnesota on day eight of the Unicalender. Thanks for joining us.